Hey guys, what's going on? This is your girl, Model E, of course, of the E and Friends podcast. Thank you for tuning into another bi weekly episode. I am excited to be bringing videos to you guys, and I have a lot in store for you guys. This, uh, we, we're gonna see how this thing goes, okay? We're definitely gonna see how it goes. I'm excited, and I know you guys are too. If you have watched, and listen to the last two episodes of the Ian Friends podcast. I had a guest. The first one, I had two guests. And the second one, it was just um, Tabitha and I. We had a great conversation and I love the way that everybody interacted. So this is kind of what prompted me to do the videos because you guys, apparently you love Model E and I love you guys too. And I wanna give you guys the best of me. And also I want you guys to see me as well. So you can see all my reactions and everything like that. You know, I'm not hiding behind the camera no more or the mic. I'm in front of it. So welcome to the E and Friends podcast. Now, remember guys, I want you to keep up with me on Instagram at E and Friends pod and on Twitter at Erica Jones with the Z on the end. All right, and make sure that you tell a friend to tell a friend. Now, since Model E is going to be doing these videos from now on. So yeah, I'm finally here and we're gonna do this, okay? So, you know, you guys just, just let me know, you know, if you want me to talk about anything specific, you can always be anonymous and just message me or if you wanna chat with me, come on, let's go in, nothing but a thing. Let's do this. I'll be glad to have you on the show. I have no problem at all. And also before I get into my conversations, y'all see this hair? Y'all see this color? It's my one year anniversary on my locks. Hey! So I have my locks for one year now. It has been a long journey. It has up until I was about four months in. Guys, let me tell you something. I know this seems, uh, it seems bad to say the ugly phase because it, it just makes it seem like you're just so ugly and you don't care about yourself and your hair. That is not true. I see why they call it the ugly phase. It's because your hair goes through a lot and it's still trying to mature during the locking process. And for me, my hair is very soft. I have very soft, fine hair, not a lick of coarse hair in this thing. And my loctician and I, we were looking at each other like, girl, I don't know if this ain't gonna work, but we're gonna continue at it anyway. So we, we all had our doubts, but at the same time, we were very positive with doing it. So once my four months came, and I started to see it start budding more in the back than anything. As you can see in the front here, for those of you who are actually watching, if you're listening, then you will have to actually go and watch and see this. So the front is still like a little soft. I still have a little straggly hair here and there, but my back is perfect. And so to celebrate my one year lock anniversary, I decided to get color and um, I chose um, a reddish wine color. I just kind of matching my shirt. I didn't really even thought about that. <laughs> so that's what I decided to do. So thank you to those out there who helped me decide on the color and told me all these, you know, different ombre colors and stuff. And I'm bold, but your girl ain't that bold yet. So, but once these things come down here, then maybe I'll think about doing some two tone or, you know, three colors in my hair. So thank you for that. And moving on to our conversation, I want to first go ahead and get out the way and, you know, talk briefly, very briefly, because you guys know I don't like talking about politics and religion and, you know, a lot of these sad things that's going on. I try to keep it to a minimum because I know me and I don't want to say anything that's going to incriminate myself, okay? So I'm going to talk briefly about it, but... I do want to, you know, take a moment and, you know, celebrate those who lost their lives in the Buffalo um, shooting that happened 
a couple weeks ago where um, this white young male, I think he was like 18 years old, I believe, he went into one of these stores in Buffalo, New York, where a lot of you know black people normally shop. And he went in there and he shot up the store and he killed a lot of people. Most of the people were elderly people. You know, these people were someone's mother, someone's grandmother, you know, maybe someone's aunt. You know, they were grandmothers to grandkids, you know. And I, I look back and, you know, I miss my grandmother, you know, so much. And I, I wish that I still had her in my life. So, but for those people to go and get killed for no reason, their lives to be ended for no reason, um, it's a disgrace. And quite frankly, I'm, I'm very much tired of it. I'm tired of hearing about it. And it's like nothing is being done about it. One woman, she was talking about it and she had just actually left the store. I think she said she had got home 10 seconds and that's when she heard that the, the shooting incident had happened. And, um, you know, she was she was fortunate that, you know, she left in that, that time. So, um, you know, my condolences goes out to the victim's family. You know, sorry that this has happened. And also to the Texas shooting that happened at a Texas elementary school. I think this was just last week where two teachers and I think like 17 kids lost their lives um apparently again for no reason I mean, you know why these people do these things and also the the active shooter there he actually you know got killed um the way that they handle it i think that they could have handled it better by going into the school and actually trying more harder at saving these kids and it's it's, it's a lot involved so you know you guys just keep your eyes keep your your heads always on the swivel like i say always keep your eyes open keep your head on the swivel when we're out in these streets you going somewhere to a basic grocery store not even thinking that something like this can happen yes it can happen so always be aware you know look out check your surroundings and you know just be thinking of stuff in your head like in case the situation happens what would you do what can you do like don't think of the normal things to do you know scream or crouch down on the floor or hide under a table or something get in somewhere where nobody's going to find you you know like get into some cabinets or something if you can like go somewhere else where it's maybe close to an entrance that you can get out more quicker we have to think about these things i know we don't want to and we shouldn't have to but there is harm all over and coming at every angle you know at us and we need to be more aware of that so um i, I just wanted to bring that message to you guys um you know, just, just be safe out there. And my condolences, once again, goes out to those kids' parents because they're of innocent bystanders. They didn't have anything to do with this, nothing at all. And it just, it saddens me to hear that because I have kids. I have two kids that's in elementary. And that could be any of our kids. You know, this is why, you know, I love my kids every day. I tell them I love them every morning. I tell them I love them when they go to bed at night because once they leave out the door, you just never know because the school should be a safe place. Like you should always think church and school are the places that are the most sacred and should be the most safest place where we are at parents, we are out working, you know, we are trying to make a living for our family and we send them to school we should our hearts should be at rest saying you know my kids are at school they are very safe i don't have to worry about them for seven or eight hours a day because they are safe and so you know now we we almost have to think of an alternative now you know of keeping our kids at school you know and we shouldn't have to deprive them of that but hey you know we have to do what we have to do as parents and everything so just everybody just keep being aware, you know, so my, I, it's, I don't, I'm not going to talk about it no more. I say I'm going to keep it brief because I don't, I don't want to say the wrong thing because I, I have a lot of opinions about it, but I'm not going to get into it. So um, to get into a more brighter conversation, <laughs> this is going to be funny. So 
I recently had to block somebody on Instagram, okay? So it's very weird how it happened because a lot of people, you know, friend request you on Instagram and, you know, they just follow you and that's it. You know, so most of the time I go to people's page and I look to see what they have going on. And if it's something that I feel that, you know, they're trying to come at me or trying to holler or they got a lot of bootylicious shit on their page, you know, I'm not going to follow them because I'm not into that. Your girl model E ain't into that. Okay. <laughs> so... It was this one guy, he followed me, and I basically, I followed him back, um, not even thinking, you know, I, it was just somebody, and I just followed him. So next thing you know, I got a text message in my inbox, and it was like, hello, how are you doing? You know, just a little basic stuff, and right then in my head, I'm like, oh, shit, I'm, I'm going to have to tell him off, because I already know what it is, how he started off the conversation, I already knew. So, and he comes back again and he said, um, nice to meet you. Um, you're gonna, you know, be glad that, you know, we're friends on Instagram. So I ignored him, of course. I ignored, still, you know, kept it as a friend because, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be nice here. So I'm not going to do my usual one, two, three and just totally delete you, write you out the light. I'm gonna give you a chance, okay? So he continued to have a conversation. It was, it went on probably for like a couple days and I just straight ignored him. And so finally um, he sent a message and he said, um, I'm not trying to be rude or anything like that. I just want to be your friend. I said, well, we can be friends on Instagram. I say, I don't know you and you don't know me. I said, but we can be friends on Instagram. <laughs> like that right and uh, and I say and first of all I say I don't want my friends I say because I'm a married woman and I don't do that and he said well um you're gonna be happy that we are friends and I say first of all how did you find me on Instagram and he said oh well um I have a, a list of people and you were you know one of the people that I recommend to follow bullshit cat come on dude do you really think that i am that stupid okay like you think that i'm naive no sir not by far i am not <laughs> so okay so he said that and i was like um well first of all i'm not into what you're selling i am married and i'm just on instagram doing my thing you don't know me and i don't know you so let's just follow each other and keep it as is. So he comes back again and he just kept talking. He just kept talking. I said, you know what? Let me go ahead and let me unfollow you and let me block you and any other accounts that you may have because I don't want to deal with you no more, okay? So that was it. I gave him a chance. He messed it up. So now he on the street on his own because I'm not looking for that shit. Like, we can follow each other on Facebook, but you don't have to talk to me. You don't have to tell me good morning. I got a husband who do that, okay? You don't have to do that stuff. I am good, honey. I don't even, I don't know you from a can of paint. You probably don't even look like how your picture looks, okay? Your girl ain't doing it, so stop. So if you coming on Erica Jones' Instagram with some shit, I ain't here for it. Your girl ain't here for it. Bam. Mm. <laughs> so, moving on. Let me tell you guys of an embarrassing moment I had. Guys, look. And I think this is the first time that I have ever been embarrassed. Like, not totally embarrassed because I don't think the dude realized that I was trying to shank him off and he wasn't trying to hit on me. Okay, so let me tell you. One day I decided, you know, to go and just clean my car out. So every now and then, you know, I'll go to the, um, uh, to the car wash and I'll, you know, do my car out real good sometimes. So this particular day, I had the kids with me. So we came and 
we saw the car. He was driving a Challenger. And of course, you know, my husband has one. So the kids immediately recognize the Challenger. And plus, if it has any added additions on it, they are like, ooh, hey, ooh, I love that car, man. You know, that's how they are. So we rode by the car and we noticed that nobody was in the car. So we went to our side, to the opposite side, which was across from him to start, you know, vacuuming out the car. And uh, we were taking the rugs and stuff out. And as I was taking my rug out, put it in the trunk, I heard someone said, hey ma'am, can I get a jump? Automatic girl was like, not this shit again. I'm thinking he was trying to holler at me because guys do that. They have pickup lines like that, you know? So I'm like, okay, let me let his ass down easy. I ain't into this shit, okay? And not today anyway. It's a hot out here. I don't feel like conversating with nobody. So when I closed the trunk down, right? Because I, I barely, I half looked at him and I gave him this look like, really? That's what I said. And then when I closed the trunk down, he really wanted to jump. He wasn't in the car because he went across the street to get some help, to get some jumper cables. And the dude was standing there with him with the jumper cables in his hand. I was like, how embarrassing. But I don't think that he noticed that. <laughs> I don't think he noticed it. And then, um, you know, he was just smiling. He had a bunch of gold in his mouth. And, and he was just smiling like, I really need your help. You know, that's how he was. <laughs> So I told the kids, I said, okay, guys, y'all go ahead and stay over there. I'm going to jump in the car and then I'm just going to, you know, slide over a little bit to the left so I can let him get a jump. And he did what he did. And the guy went back across the street with the jumper cables and he said, thank you so much. He was like, um, I, I was washing my car and I left the radio on with the car off and my battery died. And I was like, oh, no problem. I said, you have a good day. And he said, thank you so much. And that was it. And he left and went by his business. He was not trying to holler at me, but he used the holler pickup line and I gave him the look real quick, like, Nick, if you go down. Yeah, I did. So it was a little, you know, embarrassing, but the good thing is he didn't notice it. So, but you know, I don't, I don't get those. That was my first time I ever got, cause normally they be doing the cat call and I'd be have to let them down, but I don't, he, he was serious. He really needed some help. So, you know, it's just to help him out. I did, I really did. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys ever had any um, moments like that, make sure you let me know or come on the show and we can talk about it, all right? All right, so moving on. I shouldn't even talk about this, but we're going to make this a real quick, like, blank of an eye, real quick conversation, okay? This Juneteenth ice cream. But good thing is, by the time you hear this episode, guess what? It is already pulled off the shelf. It is gone because a lot of people was mad and frustrated and upset about it. I know I was. I was like, hold on, Sam Walton always trying to get more money out of our pockets. And I'm smart. I used to work for Walmart a very long time ago for a, a lot of years. So I understand the process. I know about Sam, okay? So he's going to do everything he can to get a little bit of money. And I mean, he... He tricked a lot of folks. He still trick y'all today with stuff, but you're not gonna trip me on no Juneteenth, I'm sorry. That holiday had just came into effect and I'm gonna start making it my holiday. Even if my nine to five don't give it to me, I'm gonna make it mine because it's a time for us to celebrate. Um, Martin Luther King birthday, I'm gonna cook out too. I'm gonna have a good time Martin Luther King birthday. We do it on Memorial, so why we don't do it on Martin Luther King? Yeah, think about that and let me know. I mean, you know, we can go and celebrate red, white, and blue. Why we can't, you know, celebrate this nice man who did a lot of work for us and and today we basically still almost in the same situation, you know? I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm gonna start doing, I don't know about y'all, but that's what I'm gonna do. Because, um, you know, I don't like for people to be, you know, taking advantage of us and you know because these people feel that they could just give us a little bit of room like give us a little bit of space and they think we'll be okay with it you know just to shut us up for a little while I know what's going on I can see I told y'all this video can be very detrimental because 
y'all are going to be seeing my reactions and I'm going to have to hold back on some because sometimes I can be a little too much. I know how I can be. All right. But anyway, no red velvet cheesecake ice cream over here. And quite frankly, if you already bought one, you better enjoy it because it ain't going to be no more. Okay. Cooled off the shelf. Goodbye. <laughs> Holla. All right. Um, I have another conversation. I don't know. Y'all know Kevin Spacey, right? The actor. Well, he was charged in the UK on four counts of sexual assault on boys. So this has happened over a period from the early 2000s. And he has been to court and they found him guilty. You know, he's been touching these little boys and they were um, younger at the time, less than 18 years old. You know, now they are like in their late 20s and early 30s. One actually came forward and then the other rest started to talk about how, you know, they were somewhere and he groped one of them. So I'm like, this nasty ass man, he is going overseas thinking he can get away with this shit. But you don't know when some overseas people find out shit, oh, they gonna get your ass. So now his old ass is got got. Like, don't be undercover with that shit. Go get you somebody your own age. Go with the man. If you don't want nobody to know that you go the other way, go with somebody else your own age. Don't mess with no child. Don't mess up a child's life because you want to be an old pervert. That's the story for another day. I'm not going to say no more. Y'all can go and read it yourself, okay? I just want to bring it up because I don't like these little perverts. I don't like these perverts moments. Um, don't do anything to these kids that can mess up their life. Don't do that. I, that's something that I don't believe in and I don't like it. So that's the only reason why I brought him up because I don't like the, the perversity. Yes, the perversity <laughs> that he's doing, all right? <laughs> Video, and I hope that you guys can see it. I'm gonna go ahead and play it. This is my point of um, child support. Now, these girls continue, or shall I say, these women today they continue to prove my point of wow, child support is not really for the kids. It's for them, you guys. It's for them. So let me go ahead and see if I can share my screen and let me go ahead and give this to y'all. I did everything I need to do. I'm here waiting for his thousand dollars within a month. I'm paying for the school fees. I'm paying for after school. I'm paying for extra. I'm paying all of this, right? Now the end of the month, he give me my thousand dollars. And maybe I went and bought a wig. But guess what? My child's still taken care of. You know what I'm saying? I'm paying myself back. That's Don't let me find it. I'm going straight to the court. Like, but you know, how you going to You want to change it to not child support. This is just baby mama support. support. Baby mama support. support. That's what we're doing. Now. I, that's five hundred dollars going to college for. But what if I already it? have a fund for her? What if I'm already like? What if I'm so already handling so things? Add into that fund. <laughs> no, I'm paying myself back. And that's then that's double in the fund. Guys, 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 look. Okay, see, th this is what I'm, this is what I'm talking about here, okay? So, this young lady is saying, when she get her $1,000 a month for child support, she may buy her some shit. She may go buy her a new wig. Now, how smart is that? Like the other lady said, add more money to that child support for the fun. Add more money for the fun for the kid. Like, just because you already got $1,000 set aside, let dad's money contribute to it as well. And like, I don't understand that. Like, they keep proving my point that child support is not for the kids. Now you're thinking, okay, just because you already got everything taken care of, once the dad's money comes through that, I'm sure that you drove him to court to get and now you want to steal the money. But I wouldn't even come on nobody TV and just say some shit like that. I wouldn't do that. I would look, that, that looks bad on me. As a mother, 
I will be embarrassed to say, I'm getting child support money for my kid. But at the same time, I have money saved up for my kids, so that money that's coming in, I'm just gonna use it for me. Buy me hair, buy me nails, buy me lashes that looks like a butterfly, or buy me more clothes. Stupid. Save the money. Save the money. And this is why a lot of men get upset at the child support system, because the money does not go to the kids. It doesn't always go to the kids. Yeah, they may go take them to get their hair cut. Or they may buy them a pair of shoes or buy a pair of clothes or go get a meal at a restaurant, you know, once a month or so. But the money is not going to the kids at all. It's going to the mom. And is that fair? No, it is not fair at all. It's not fair. And I hate that this system is set up that way. You know, I had a conversation with two older women um, last weekend about this and um and these like I said these were older women they were in their late 60s and they were talking about how screwed up this system is here with child support and with everything else like I've had a conversation with you I may need to come and get them to come on the Eve Friends podcast that's how great our conversation was but for them to recognize that and they've been in this world for a very long time the system definitely is screwed up guys but yeah but you guys think about that now all you young women out there who are getting child support save the money for the kids because it's for the kid now if there was a man out there who wasn't giving you any money for child support then you would be right here hollering and crying how you don't have no help with your child but then you got some fathers out here who are paying child support and they probably just paying child support and not doing anything else because they don't want to deal with you. That's another that's another sad issue as well that we have going on because he knows how you are. So here, take your money. I don't want to deal with you. Just take the money. It's sad. But I'm not going to get into the whole child support situation. It's really not my lane, you know? <laughs> All right, now, bring in that, then then my next question is, is having kids a must? Do you think that we should just have kids after kids after kids and knowing that we can emotionally, financially, and physically take care of them? See, now, and I am going to say the Bible. The Bible says, be fruitful. But it also says, don't be stupid. Okay? You know what you got to do. I don't understand women who goes out here and have all these kids and they complain about not having anything, can't afford anything. I can't go nowhere. I have too much kids. Nobody wants to date me. I have too much kids. Then why the hell are you having all these babies with all these different baby daddies? Why? That's the question you need to be asking yourself. Not nobody else. We don't know you. We don't know your situation. Why are you asking us? Ask yourself, why are you spreading your legs and getting pregnant and having these babies? I was going to say something else with that too, but I'm not going to say it. I told y'all it's but y'all just wheeling his head right here. And sometimes I have to stop myself because I'll say it and I, I can't I can't say everything on here that I want to. But stop having all these babies if you know you can't take care of them. You depend on the government to take care of you. That's why a lot of people who really need help can't get help because people like you are abusing the system. You get all the food stamps, you get all the welfare, you get all the places to live, you eat all the best food. That's all I'm gonna say for that. But no, you do not have to have kids. You can pretend you're having kids. You can get on some birth controls. I've done it for a very long time. A very long time. It's simple. You can just pop a pill. You can get a shot here. 
or you can get a shot on your Botox. You can stick something up there if you want to. It's totally up to you. And most of the time, guess what? It is free. You don't have to pay for birth control. Okay? Obama made it to where you don't have to pay for birth control. So it's really up to you if you want to live like that. I don't want to live like that. I don't want to be dragging around with eight kids behind me and I don't have shit going on for myself. I'm going to know that I'm able to care and take care of these kids. And anyway, I don't even want eight kids. I used to say that I wanted to have five kids. Well, that shit went out the window fast when I had one. And I turned around when I had another one, which is cool. They're five years apart. I questioned myself, why did I do that? You know, because they're at a stage where they're constantly fighting and arguing all the time. And sometimes it's uncontrollable for me. You know, I have to like block them out because they just going back and forth like a rag doll, back and forth. Back and forth. They just eating at each other. They just biting at each other. Rah, 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 rah. You know, it's a lot. And I don't want to do that with five more. Kids not going to kill me. Mm-mm. I don't see how y'all do it, but if that's what y'all want to do, if y'all love it, then y'all like it, I love it. I'm going to say it like that. But um, I'm going to take your mind. And your dad gonna do this thing. This was our plan, and we're gonna carry it out and we're gonna do it together, whether you want to or not. <laughs> so you can be fruitful, but also be smart at the same time, okay? All right, just a little bit from your knowledge basket. Just filling your knowledge basket up. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and end this show tonight with one more topic. And this is about Kourtney Kardashian. Her doctor told her to drink Travis Barker's semen four times a week to help with her thyroid levels. <laughs> what y'all think about that? Have y'all seen that going around? I think it was on the inside where I saw that. And um, it just amazes me what people can put online you know like just say things like just to catch people's attention I mean, because it caught my attention i mean i don't know anything about drinking it just to drink it to help thyroid issues i don't you can yoni steam natural yoni steam that can help you with thyroid issues but drinking semen um i i don't i don't think that's a fair call i don't think that equates um to having your thyroid fixed or healthy. I don't think so. But if you are one of those people who like to drink semen on a regular basis and might have to get your stomach pumped, but that's up to you. <laughs> it's up to you. But um these Kardashians girl, you know, they something else. You know, they always in the news, they always doing stuff, you know, to keep themselves relevant. And I mean look, I don't blame them. To each his own. You do what you do. You do what you got to do to get out there and stay out there, okay? But, you know, I'm going to start doing some stupid shit. I'm going to start saying some stupid shit and doing some stupid shit. Let me see how y'all do. Let me see if y'all give me millions of dollars to do those stupid shit. Nah, I'm, just, I'm not doing that. I'm not stupid. But I'm Model E. Y'all know how I do. So, yeah. I, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. But yeah, guys, um, I'm going to end this show. I hope that you guys enjoy this solo dolo with me on video. And if you are listening, make sure you go back and watch it on YouTube on the Got What You Need Network. And it's um, GWUN Network. So make sure you go over there, you like and subscribe. And soon with that, guys, um, um, I will have a, a... a message about that because we have something great that's coming over to the Got What You Need Network and I want you guys to be a part of it. So I'm excited to share that with you all. <laughs> You're very excited. So guys, make sure you continue to follow me on Instagram at Ian Friends Pod and on Twitter at Erica Jones with the Z on the end. And you guys be good and take care. And if you can't be good, be careful. Bye.